welcome back to the shop. I just wanted to do a quick end of the year video since a lot of things have happened this year. First of all, I moved my shop upstairs out of the basement into this ground level shop with daylight, which, <laughs> which has greatly improved my mood and overall and also it's just a nicer space to work in. Secondly, I added a ton of equipment to the shop this year. Apart from the hardness tester, the CNC router, I also got a large drill press and I put out the pre-order. I ordered a surface grinder, a new surface grinder for the shop. So this is the website from BIMA. Let's switch it to English. And this is the BIMA FSM 260. This is the grinder that I ordered. It's, it's honestly a very small grinder. Uh, 260 millimeter table traverse here and when you are when running the grinder you sit in front of it and you look at the circumference of the grinding wheel which makes a lot of sense for small work and when you do profile grinding because you see very exactly what's happening at the grinding wheel instead of looking at at uh like on a traditional surface grinder on the side of the wheel where it's always a little bit tough to tell when you grind, for example, on the back side of the wheel. Here's another picture where you can see the operation. I, I, I was able to try the grinder and this orientation of the grinder really works extremely well. Uh, immediately made sense to me. As you can see, the spindle can be tilted for either for grinding chamfers or angles. But also when you do slot grinding, you can kick the wheel head a little bit off, off, off vertical. So you do not grind with the whole side of the wheel when you do side wheeling. And none of the ways are, are regular slide ways. They are all cross roller guides, which is, is very good because those last a long time. I'm not getting this type of DRO. The the updated DRO is a touch panel Heidenheim DRO. Very excited about this machine. It's not a cheap machine. Don't think you get this for like 5,000 bucks. This is more like new car pricing. Here are some examples of work. They sell this basically as a machine for a tool and die shop that needs a small grinder just to do touch up work and quick grinding work without disturbing the larger CNC or automatic grinders. Also, which was a very humbling experience, <laughs> I was mentioned by Adam Savage in a recent video where he talks about things and uh, media that he watched and followed in 2021. And I was blown away to hear my own name in there because Mythbusters and later tested with Adam Savage always had a great influence on me. I started watching Mythbusters pretty much when it aired first time here in Germany. That was during my apprenticeship and it had a huge impact on just just watching watching Adam and Jamie work on stuff and improvise and use things in ways that are they, they are not intended for was rather inspiring for me and it was great fun also of course so <laughs> thanks Adam this uh, that was really really humbling experience another thing that happened is the with intolerance podcast this is a podcast podcast is of course a audio recording that's put up for listening later it's not a live show and with intolerance is a podcast about machinists and machining related persons and it's it's run by Dylan this is his Instagram website or his Instagram page people don't have websites anymore and each week he has a different person and end of November um, I he, he asked me to come on and, and talk for a little bit over an hour and we, we had good fun there so if you're into podcast uh, Google with intolerance podcast and you will find a way to listen to it or if you have Spotify you will find it on there or if you have any podcast catching software that will work also even I think you can 
even get it on I iTunes, maybe, yes. So if you're a podcast listener, give it a try. The biggest thanks goes out to all of my viewers, all of you who not only watch, but also keep a very civilized culture down in my comment section. I barely have to uh, remove or ban comments or people. Sometimes I, I'm really bad at answering comments and answering to, to private messages, which I, I should get better at, but in all honestly, it probably won't. The time I, I can, I can put either time in videos, which everyone will benefit off or answer individual questions, which most of the time only help an individual person. It's, uh, it's tricky. Generally, I will go for um, what benefits more people. If, if, if you ask something in, in the comments or in an email and it's, it's a very complicated question where I have to do research myself to do an answer and, and I put in like an hour into an answer, that, that's tough to, it's, it's almost impossible to do for me. So sorry, I guess. But yes, thanks to all who support me. I, do, I don't mention the Patreon thing a lot. It's, it's, making, it's making the time I put in the videos very valuable for me. It makes it easier for me to balance between working on a video, spending the additional time in a video or doing more customer work. And every, everybody benefits of it. So thanks to all of those who support me there. Highly appreciated, let's say it that way. And I can also tell you, all of the money goes back in the shop. It's not like I'm buying myself a car, which I maybe should. Let's have a look at, at some of the changes here in the shop while we're here. I always wanted a large drill press for, you know, drilling holes. And I decided to go all in and bought a ridiculous large drill press. Uh, ignore the mess around it. The shop is in complete disarray at the second for various reasons. But I got this, I think in November and it's more step four drill press with power feed, uh, geared spindle, 100 to, to 3000 RPM. It's the same head, almost the same head as on my milling machine, which I bought for a reason. First of all, this allows this mill to run a boring head because it has a drawbar. I can pull a regular boring head in it and use this machine as a, a boring mill. Also, I can put a XY table on, on the machine and use it for light milling if for some reason my milling machine has too little vertical height. Also, it has a tilting table, rotating table, the table moves up and down and the head moves up and down and tilts too. So very flexible machine, a rather rigid uh, power feed for the quill, three phase powered, a very nice drill press. Really, I, I'm very happy. And I was asked why I didn't buy a old German Altsmetall AB3 or something like that. And the reason is because old Altsmetalls go for like half a million euros and this was way of more affordable. And this has the benefit of a drawbar for the spindle, be a quill lock, fine feet for the quill and a geared spindle, which all of which a uh, uh, regular Altsmetall drill press does not have. Also, this machine does not have the overhang on the back with the motor hanging down, being very space efficient with the motor up there. So that's the idea behind why I bought this machine. And I already have a foot switch down there, which I will hook up into the machine for power tapping. And I already started modifying the depth stop here with a nice ground rod, which will not only be the depth stop, but only also hold a digital readout for the drill depth. So, an overall, very nice machine. I'm very happy. Bloody heavy machine. It's oh, close to 500 kilograms, I think. Next to the drill press, you see a large cleared out space apart from the compartmented miter saw. This is where the new surface grinder will go. 
This is the opposing side to the drill press and also next to my CNC router. And I rearranged the tool grinder to be angled into the corner. The bit grinder and the small lip surface grinder, which I will keep, I will not sell it. And with those three machines and the surface grinder, the new surface grinder right where I'm standing now, this will be basically the grinding corner of the shop. I will not I will not put in a wall or something like that because when I'm grinding I'm using dust extraction. So grinding dust in my shop is usually not a big issue. Also I'm modifying currently the CNC router's enclosure. The old enclosure used to be about this tall, closed on top and all other sides were closed too. And it, it just looked ugly. It was a huge, it looked like a uh, like I was growing pot in here. The new one will be open topped, a little bit of an angle here to make it a little bit more aesthetic pleasing. And has a sliding door in front here that slides down. So that's that's what I'm working on currently. That's also why I have the compound miter saw here to cut those aluminum extrusions. Here, not much has changed apart from the additional mess from modifying the CNC router. I added material storage back here. These are 40 millimeter PVC pipes uh, screwed to a wooden substructure that's bolted against the wall. And I keep my one meter sticks of material in there. And as you can see, all the material is has a, a, a tag on it. It's either with the label printer or it's engraved with a die grinder like like this tool steel here or it's punched in also the diameter usually of the stick over here in the machining side or manual machining side not much has changed basically nothing has changed since i moved in here i'm very happy how this room works and all this is really working well and that's a project I'm working on currently. These are water pump impellers for Honda CX500 motorcycles. It seems like you cannot get new replacement parts for these anymore. So I was asked to machine in total about uh, something like 80 of these on the CNC. And I'm very happy to do that. A uh, video on these is coming. I filmed, filmed the whole process. So that's that's definitely <laughs> promising videos is always a little bit uh, dangerous but uh, i'm pretty far in editing this, this video already so that's coming i'm running out of material here i'm stretching out this video far too long anyways already have a good 2022 be safe out there don't break anything and try to be a decent human being Thank you all for watching. Thanks for the ongoing support and I'll be back.